Senator, thank you so much for uh, having a cup of coffee. You, you probably need coffee uh, being need on the coffee campaign trail. I need coffee, and it's great that we're at Winstead's. I spent uh, many years uh, feeding my children uh, limeades and cheeseburgers at Winstead's. So, you know, Kansas City, you've had a, a big part of your career here. Kind of talk about when you come back to this area, um, you know, you're in D.C., but when you come back to Kansas City, what thoughts run through your mind? Well, you know, it's feel, it always feels like home, um, and it is uh, a tremendous community, and I've been so proud of, uh, I mean, we are all proud of the Chiefs, and we're all proud of the Royals, uh, but what we're really proud of, I think, is the way this community has grown and the, the progress that has been made in Kansas City. There's still issues that have to be addressed in Kansas City, but it is a vibrant, booming uh, city that has so much to offer so many people. So I will love it when I'm here. Being a, a woman in leadership, uh, you've kind of been a trailblazer at times. Uh, being a woman in leadership, talk about the difference between when you were Jackson County prosecutor and now a U.S. Senator of seeing more people that look like you, females in leadership roles versus years ago when you know you might have been one of a few well i gotta tell you growing up uh, in my career in a male dominated profession has made me stronger and tougher um, i always knew i had to be a little bit more prepared i always knew i had to work a little harder and um, so i have seen progress i mean when i began uh, in the state legislature representing waldo and brookside there were some tough times in Jefferson City. I was single, I was young, and I had to learn how to manage that. But um, with every barricade that was erected, it added fuel to my determination to do a little bit better and work a little bit harder. And I think in the long run that all of those experiences have made me a stronger senator for Missouri. I know that the experience I got at the Jackson County Courthouse cross-examining criminal defendants that makes me much better in a hearing when I'm cross-examining a bureaucrat. The experience I had as a state auditor, that helped me find billions of dollars of waste at the Pentagon that I was able to get rid of. So I really am grateful for my experience, um, even the tough things that I faced along the way. When people say the senator from Missouri uh, only votes on party line, and I know in debates and in campaign ads you have been vocal saying you're an independent person. Why, think, do you, why do you think people still think you're, uh, you just vote with... Because it's what they think they have to say on the other side. I've been really disappointed in this campaign. It's been based on 100% attacking me and, and lying about my record. Um, it, it's really disappointing. I know Josh Hawley's in a hurry, but um, you don't have to lie to lead. And uh, I, I may not always vote the way everybody in Missouri wants me to vote. This is a tough state. You know, everybody disagrees on stuff. But there's a lot of stuff we agree on, and I'm good at finding those things. I'm the fifth most likely senator to break with my party in Washington. I think that's the independence Missourians want. Now, they can dress up the statistics all they want, but if you ask Republicans when it wasn't an election year who they can work with in Washington, almost every single one of them would name me because I work with them all the time to find that elusive common ground that actually gets things done. I think what's really frustrating for me is people don't know what we've gotten done. All the drama around Kanye and Stormy Daniels and all the chaos that is surrounding Washington right now. Um, I hope people go on my website. We've listed a hundred of my accomplishments that I think would really resonate with Missourians. That's just a partial list of my accomplishments. But if you look over that list of a hundred things I've gotten across the finish line, I think Missourians would say I've worked hard for them. Why do you think so many people are energized to vote on basically both parties now? You have Democrats who are already, I'm guessing, energized to try to win right. back the House and Senate, and then Republicans now after Kavanaugh and, and, and certain things. Why do you think so many people, I mean, midterms aren't that popular. Po politicians would hope that they are, but voter turnout is expected to be record even more than the presidential election. Well, I think um, that's what happens when um, people get really tribal. Um, and I frankly am, am, I mean, I'm glad 
that people are energized to participate, that I'm sad that so much of it feels like I'm voting because the other side stinks. Um, I would like, I hope more independents vote. I hope people who um, don't vote a party line think this is an important election. Um, people who reject all the tribalism. And I think that has, you know, I think the president is somebody who, uh, unlike Ronald Reagan, who was a Republican president, but I am absolutely 100% for the proposition that he constantly tried to unite this country, not divide it. And I think that um, this president is, um, is more comfortable dividing us and, and constantly attacking the other side, as opposed to finding a way that our founding fathers wanted us to go forward, and that is through a checks and balances and compromise and figuring out, okay, we can't agree on this, but there's a whole list of stuff we can't agree on. That's why I hope independent voters show up in this election, because they're going to decide this election, and I hope that they vote for somebody who thinks that's the most important qualification. Healthcare has been something that yeah. has divided everyone. Uh, your take on pre-existing conditions, I know you support um, Obamacare and you say that it just needs to be improved, not dismantled. There's been a lot of back and forth over pre-existing conditions. Do you think voters are, they know the facts of what one side thinks and what you think? Well, I know that the Republicans have voted 70 times to repeal all the provisions of the ACA. I know that my opponent, who is a smart lawyer, uh, filed a lawsuit and he didn't ask the court to sever out pre-existing conditions, which is something you can do in the law. He could have said to the court, throw all this out but keep pre-existing conditions. He didn't do that. He said throw it all out. He was so anxious to score a political point, he didn't think about the impact on Missourians. And I would point out to, to, to the people of Missouri, if in fact he is so comfortable that pre-existing protection is going to remain in place, why did he ask the court to not make a decision until after November? Uh, that's because he knows there's no safety net there. There is no replacement. The Republicans couldn't even get Republicans to vote for their replacement because it was going to hurt so many people. We have bipartisan bills that will improve the health care insurance system in this country. We don't have to call it the ACA. Let's save the things in the ACA that are working well, like protection for pre-existing conditions, and fix some of the problems. That's when I can work well in, in a bipartisan way, and we've got bipartisan bills ready. But Mitch McConnell wanted to avoid the topic because they had promised repeal and replace, and they couldn't deliver. So he just said, no, we're not going to talk about it anymore. And the reason I'm talking about it is because I did 50 town halls. And that's what people are worried about prescription drug costs and their protections under the ACA and that's why I've made those the centerpieces of my campaign. Is health care the most important thing of this November election? I think it is. I think health care is on the ballot. Um, it, it, people should realize it's very telling that uh, in a major national publication this week a pharmaceutical lobbyist for the big drug companies admitted that it would be a problem for them if I came back to Washington. They refused to deny that they're the ones paying for all these nasty ads that aren't telling the truth about my record. So people need to think about that. Do they want the senator to go back to Washington that Big Pharma doesn't want? Or do they want somebody who's paying the bills for uh, Josh Hawley's campaign? Uh, I, I, think, um, I think Missourians uh, would appreciate the fact that the big pharmaceutical industry sees me as an enemy. As we wrap things up, why do you think, um, and sometimes it happens to just women in politics, why do you think you have you know, some people, you said in, in the last debate that, you know, I know I can be annoying at times. Why do you think people look at you in such a, some people look at you in such a, like negative way? Oh, it's clear. Yeah, it's hard for me. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a grandmother of 11. I um, work my way th through How school as a waitress. How do you keep up with Christmas? Grandmother yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, <laughs> but it's fun, right? Okay. I love it. Um, it. It's hard. That part of it's hard, but... I don't think there's anybody in the history of Missouri politics that has had more millions of dollars in negative ads run against them. Um, I think this election alone, it's about $45 million worth of negative ads. That's a lot to take on and not suffer in the public eye. And I am pushy. I am. I, I get carried away sometimes, and I can be really obnoxious. Um, but that's because I'm passionate, and I'm a fighter, and I feel strongly about it. 
and that rubs people the wrong way and sometimes it's really hard for women to be pushy and obnoxious. Um, you know, you wander over into that t territory where people call you the name that starts with a B. And um, so, but it is what it is. And Missouri, I hope, uh, will realize, warts and all, that I fight hard for them and I get a lot done for them. And I am somebody who believes that the middle matters, that we have to find compromise. That is a big difference between me and Josh Hawley. And I'm hoping that that side will prevail on election day. Hardest question of the morning. Yeah. Has nothing to do with politics, but could get you in trouble. Um, Who's your favorite baseball team? Okay, I know this is supposed to get me in trouble, but here's just, this should reassure Missourians <laughs> that I'm not um, a typical politician. Mm -hmm. Because you know what a typical politician would say in Kansas City? They would say the Royals. They would say the Royals. But I gotta be honest, I was raised as a Cardinal fan from a little girl. Um, my um, great uncle, who was like my grandfather, made me sit in the backyard with him and listen to Harry Carey and the Cardinals. And I heard about the Dean brothers, and I grew up cheering for the Cardinals. So I am always for the Royals unless they're playing the Cardinals. Who's your favorite Cardinals player of just ever? Yachty. Are you kidding? Yachty. He just got the Roberto Clemente Award for all the relief work he did in Puerto Rico. He's amazing. I love And of course, Stan Israel was wonderful in terms of what he meant to the community and what he meant to Missouri. Um, but let's not finish this interview without talking about the Chiefs. I mean, I've also grown up a Chiefs red fan. Hot. Um, and when the Rams were in St. Louis, I said out loud you in St. Louis, Chiefs. I was a Chiefs fan. Okay, okay. So um, I grew up also um, as a Chiefs fan. So and you got KC in St. Louis. Yeah. yeah. And That's what uh, the governor told me. He, he said he grew up uh, a Cardinals fan. And he's unashamed of that, but he's a big Chiefs fan. Yeah, and could it be more fun to be a Chiefs fan right now? Oh, man, they are I mean, hot. talk about talk about fun. Um, I, and it's... Yeah, I, I'm anxious for this campaign to be over for a lot of reasons because it's nasty and hard. And, and but um, I'm the other reason I'm anxious. I can maybe get some, to some Chiefs games, right. and spend more time paying attention to, to football in, in the closing weeks of the season. Well, Senator, thank you so much for having a cup of coffee you with bet. us. Uh, good luck in the, uh, at the election, and uh, we'll see you on the trail. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. You.